payer mix than our um, attending clinic, um, that uh, almost all of our uninsured patients are in the resident clinic. So you mentioned a few factors that would go into that difference, and that's probably another one. So. You guys in the same group? Or? Okay, great. Uh, so we also have the language barrier one that you mentioned earlier. Um, we're also noticing that age 50 is pretty much the first time that it's screened for anything, with the exception of uh, pap smears and depending on what your take on it is with mammography screening. So at least for men, <coughs> 50 is really the first time. So we're not into the screening kind of mentality. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so that's one, one thing. What did you notice about the data in terms of age? Uh, you, that no. with older age, the uh, screening, the, there was more success in where <coughs> Yeah, yeah. That there appeared to be, uh, appeared that in the 50 to 54 group, there was some, uh, there was less success with the uh, screening. Yeah. And it may just be that uh, those of us who, just turned 50, aren't in the mentality of, uh, of doing that yet. Absolutely. Um, what was the other? Um, and then just in general, degree of engagement with your own health care issues. It, it, we, were, we were extrapolating that from the uh, chart that showed the number of provider visits. Uh, and with greater provider, greater number of provider visits uh, per year, there was um, greater success in screening. There's a lot of ways to interpret that. I mean, it could be that you're not seeing your provider as often because it's far away, and so that pulls in another variable. Absolutely. Great. Well, that one other way of interpreting that is that um, your likelihood of getting screened is a random event, and the more opportunities you have, yeah. the probabilities are right. going up. <coughs> a random event at any one visit to have a that event come. At any one come. Visit. It's just it may or may not happen. So, probably not the definition of a really structured. Yeah, absolutely. Great. And what did you guys have? Um, we picked up a lot of the things that have already been discussed. Um, one that we noticed was that uh, distance, patients who look further away from the uh, clinic or the screening facility have decreased uh, compliance rate, mm -hmm. decreased uh, screening rate. Um, that kind of makes sense, I guess, you know, especially transportation being difficult or something. Um, if they take a taxi, it might be extremely expensive if you live 50 miles away from know where you have to go to get a uh, screen. Um, another one uh, that we don't have up there was that uh, just we see a lot of, there's a lot of variation between, you know, different providers yep. within the family medicine clinic. Um, there's on the low end, like a 20% um, screen rate, and then the high end, 90%. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this chart's really helpful, because um, then you can go to these specific people, because people all obviously want to be up here at the 90%. Right. And be like, you guys need to step your game up. Right. Jump. So it can be used for peer pressure and also identifying maybe what we call those bright spots of those people who have a 90% screening rate and saying, how are you doing this? What are you doing differently um, than some of the other people? And um, we actually, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. We gave that data out to everybody publicly. I blacked out the names for you just because, you know, I, I, just because I did, but when we uh, shared it with our division, all the names were on there. So the, the names are a powerful uh, part of, of that information. So, um, well, great. Well, you're all correct. Yeah. Um, did, did you have, okay. You're all right. Um, there, all these things are factors, and there are many more. Um, when we um, when we did this activity, I mean, we spent sort of hours brainstorming, and we had collected a whole lot of data, um, interviews, structured interviews, um, focus groups, and and we came up with 68 potential root causes of these, this low screening rate. Um, and so we couldn't fix all of them. Uh, it's uh, may, Maybe by the time I retire, I'll have fixed all 68. But, um, but what we did is we took these, um, and many of them are the same ones you guys came up with. Um, yep? I just wanted to really reinforce this ask why mm -hmm. five times. So if you guys are having trouble generating ideas, and one of the techniques for quality improvement is you just keep asking why. So it'll help you get to the root cause. So you might identify a reason, ask why, well, so so why are you having difficulty getting to the clinic? And then, you know, again, 
or they have to do transportation. Why? Because uh, we don't have any transportation system set up. Right. So that, I think that's a very good technique and one, one of the like base skills that you can develop from approach exactly and so we did that for instance say with patients who live uh, who live far away we said okay patients who live far away have a lower screening rate why did they have a lower screening rate um, and so we actually went down two sort of branch pathways with that one might be it's easier for them to get a colonoscopy um, at their local hospital and maybe they actually are getting screened we just don't have the records so maybe that's a different problem that we don't why so we don't have a, a good system to get outside records into our system to know that they've had it but it also could go down a different branch point right so why are why do people with uh, who live far away have low screening rate well they come here because they're on charity care because nobody in their area uh, accepts their insurance and then they can't get here and they can't get transportation to come here for the colonoscopy, which would be the only thing that's, or the stool cards to do at home and mail them here, which would be the only things that they can do under charity care. So, you know, and you can even go deeper and deeper into that and say, well, why don't we have a system set up for people who are, who are um, in this situation? So we then took the 68 potential root causes that we got to and, and tried to figure out what what would be the highest yield to work on and there's a tool called an impact effort grid that we use where you basically take the different solutions and you stick them on a grid and this one is um, high high effort high impact uh, versus sort of you go into you want to find things that have maybe a lower effort but a high impact is really the the best things to to focus on and so we got down to um, five potential root causes that we decided to focus our efforts on. Some of these I haven't really given you the background on, but I'm just going to tell you what the five are that we decided to focus on. One was documentation of these outside studies, because we realized that some of these people really are getting screened, we just don't know it. Um, also, a lot of our patients shouldn't be screened. They're actually uh, have metastatic cancer, have really severe comorbidities, and really should be excluded from the numerator and the denominator. Um, but then there are plenty of people who need to be screened, and we recognize the access into GI procedures, including um, how they made the actual appointment being a really big problem, and also just this fact that they canceled our referrals at 30 days, and they didn't actually know why, so that seemed like a good low effort, uh, high impact thing to, um, to work on. And then a lot of you guys have gotten to this, but we sort of took several of these different problems, such as low screening at age 50, low screening in people who don't come in that much, and sort of lumped them into one root cause, which we called a visit based approach. So we all know that um, you know, with sort of fee for service that, that most of medicine these days has focused around what we do at the visit um, and not what we do for a population outside of a visit. And we sort of recognize that, that these healthier people who don't come in that much, who might come in to our urgent care for a cold at age 51, we're missing them. Um, and that we're not looking at the population as a whole as opposed to just looking visit by visit. So. Um, now to try and get to some solutions. So what I'd like you to do is um, to try and brainstorm uh, uh, maybe one or two um, solutions um, that you can come up with um, and, and think about them as experiments. What could you try? What could you try tomorrow to see if this would work? And if you do that, what would you measure? Um, so I want you to each try and come up with uh, two experiments. We'll take uh, about five minutes um, to do that. If you can only come up with one, that's okay. Um, and so try and come up with what's the experiment, a little bit about what it would look like, and what would you measure to know that your change is an improvement.